Okay, ready? Man? Now, here we go. We're just four guys playing rock and roll music. I get to be that guy for, you know, well, and this is our 15 minutes of fame. I get to be that guy for 15 minutes. Ow. out there playing music and if you dig it then you dig it. The traveling sideshow of Nickelback started in 1996. Define the music. I call it groove rock. It definitely, it's just uh, sort of heavy rock and roll, but you know, high energy, high energy, high energy rock. Groove rock. Rock and small town. Yeah, in Alberta. And I've known my brother for a while. That joke's getting old. That is getting old. <laughs> I got a new joke. Yeah. Very stale. Yeah. I've known my brother for a while. That's a bad joke. Well, there was only 3,000 people in, in, in uh, the town of Canada, Alberta. And um, so as soon as anybody even got a guitar for Christmas, in 15 minutes, everyone else knew. I remember when you guys came over and checked me out when I got my, my new guitar, and they're like, well, can you play it? Can you, can you finger tap? Yeah. So we were on the uh, west end of town, we could east end of town, uh -huh. and we could hear them play. Yeah. It's a big guitar. <laughs> Family had very much musical roots. Our mother was really tough on getting us on the piano lessons at an early age, which, you know, totally hated. My mom and my dad were both very supportive right from the get-go. We, we stopped in at Edmonton, and, and my dad gets on the bus, and now my dad wants to drive the bus. And I think a lot of parents, as soon as someone gets a, a set of drums or a guitar, it's just like, oh, God, i got to put up with noise until they move out of the house. Mm -hmm. And then I have to worry about them traveling down this awful career choice. Mm -hmm. I remember calling home one time and I was like, you know what, I, I think I'm gonna come home. I, I don't know, I don't think I can do this anymore. And, and you know, most parents would be like, oh, thank God, now you can work on a family business or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. and we, I didn't get that at all. And the support that we got from, from home was just like, you know, everyone wanted to see us make it. For all the sands of land of dirt, And you play anything that makes someone sit there and go, oh, that's pretty good, you know, and, and they're entertained. Instantly, you, you've done something that, that has made someone else feel better. At that point, you're just like, okay, I've got to do this, because that's, that's the best feeling in the world. I live not too far from Main Street, and I can just crank up my amp outside and play like the, the six chords I knew how to play and, and uh, one Metallica song. <laughs> club in uh, Edmonton called Rock Central Station. Metallica had told everybody that they were going to go there, and we didn't really think that they truly would. And I think literally my jaw was on the floor. I was just like, oh my god, I can't believe James Hetfield is standing right over there. And he looked over, he looked right at me, and he brought us, he was drinking a Heineken, and he just went to take a drink and looked over at me, and he kind of did the, like one of those, and then had a drink, and I swear to god, that one little stupid head nod must have changed my life. I started playing the guitar when I was in high school. We played our high school dances, you know, and we played cover songs. I moved up from a small town, and that was playing, playing music was kind of my ticket out of the town. From my point of view, I saw this as kind of a, a nice way out. We went to Vancouver record the songs why here why not go back east um uh, one thing was the closest and uh we had some friends out here when we first came in to do our first uh, ep oh, it just seemed like a good place to start when we were an independent band we were managing ourselves all, all my bandmates would be sitting in the living room playing playstation i'd come out of the bedroom i'd be on the phone I was like 
Dude, we just got Ottawa. They're, they just started playing us 12 times a week. They're like, good. You have to find out the steps you have to take, and you just get out there and do them, just like any business. Yeah. From now on, it was a do-it-yourself project. How do they get all of yours? All the record stores across Canada. Nationwide, you What's it called? It's called Curb. The band is called Nickelback. Never made it as a wise man. I couldn't cut it as a poor man stealing. The radio uh, in, uh, in Vancouver, um, really, I mean, the music director there sort of took uh, me under his wing because I was actually making a lot of the phone calls to the radio stations and this is what you do, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this, do this, you know, and uh, just really gave us the, the helping hand. You get handed the map and X marks the spot and you gotta go and you gotta try and go get it. Got picked up by uh, Roadrunner Records after we sold probably 10,000 copies of Canada on our own. That, you know, we told them that we sold 10,000 copies when we really only sold eight. My brother and I, um, right after we signed our deal, uh, he went out and bought a big Dodge 4x4 truck, and I went and bought a Dodge Stealth, and, and bought guitars and amps and all that stuff, and, you know, we're calling him up going, hey, what'd you buy? And he's like, well, I, I got a barbecue. <laughs> just recently won the best indie rock act at the West Coast Music Awards. We were sitting uh, way at the back and we sort of had this little discussion like, uh, you know, if, if you're going to win, don't they sort of hint or, or make sure they know where you're sitting? And they sort of scan the room and if they don't see anybody in the first, you know, 10 seconds or so, they accept the award for you. And we were almost at that point. We were so far at the back of the room. So how'd you guys celebrate that night? Oh, uh, just went out and had a pretty good time. Yeah. yeah. And the Juno for best new group goes to Nickelback. Yo, oh, I'm so happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Last time you and I spoke uh, was at the Juno Awards. Yeah. We handed the Juno, and we were joking about the kiss of death for winning best new artist. Didn't really come out that way, did it, this time? No. no. Then that's such an ironic award to win since we've been around for like the last year we've been around for about five years I think it's like best new group <laughs> I always believed in this, in this this band in the beginning and I thought at one point it could have fallen to pieces um, uh, basically because of like uh, their lack of unfortunately money's a big reason why the band's sink just look you where Friendship become harder to maintain or easier when you're in the band? No, I wouldn't say harder to maintain. I think everybody kind of just grows closer. Um, you know, you fight. Everybody fights. Everybody gets some yelling matches. You know, someone's having a bad day or whatever, and they start freaking out. Then, you know, they might get dogpiled. Sometimes we, we disagree on things. Well, I, I disagree. At that point in time, my, the colleague to my right and left would heinously disagree. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I disagree with you as well. Oh, really? Yes, I do. Ah! It's just it's gonna it's gonna happen because uh, you have to respect somebody that wants to rip it up, and people that rip it up have to respect the people that want to be quiet or have it have some some silence. Yesterday, the the, the guys were kind of mad at me because I partied a little too hard the night before. He's drunk again. I had to cancel a whole day of press because when I woke up I couldn't speak in the morning. And it might have had something to do with the couple bottles of champagne that fell out of my bunk on the bus. They were none too impressed. I'm a pretty happy drunk. <laughs> Let's go get drunk. That's where we're going drink. More right about there. that. It's red. I don't know what's red. It tastes like coffee. <laughs> it's really good. You gotta have some extreme chaos. Absolutely. So much is made of the lifestyle and the party and all that stuff. You know, is it is it accurate what you hear about you guys? Oh yeah, I mean it's. It, it, <laughs> oh yeah. Chad kind of uh, he smashed his guitars on stage. I didn't realize off the show that it was my guitar. So needless to say, I was pretty pretty fucking pissed off. Now we have two separate band buses. 
there's no problems. You get a couple of the left side personalities and the right side personalities, and you kind of put them, you split them apart, right. and, and you just, you completely like, you know, erase half these problems you have. Riding in one bus before you generate a little tension in the back. <laughs> no. no, no, we're far too level-headed. Come on, it's it's like the real world. It's set lives, pull them together, see what happens. We all keep each other in check. You know, somebody somebody starts getting a little bit. You know, out of control, or, you know, everybody, somebody else is in. What are you talking about? So there's this kind of unity of being a band that's from the same place. Once tough times do, do come about, which they always do when you're in a band, it's always you can kind of look at each other and sort of let the weight kind of fall on all four shoulders instead of just one. And we got some issues to deal with and whatnot. We always, like, we get our backs together and we have everybody's back, so it's, it's pretty tight. And More of me. Less of them. Things don't get that bad. We all realize where we came from, and we're all in this together. I appreciate the, the chemistry everybody has. Hey, he'll be the first one to say, you know, it's going to be okay. And I'll be like, dude, I don't know if I can sing tonight. The rest I go through singing that song is really? incredible, dude. Yes. He'll say, you know, you sounded great last night. Chad, you have been dead on. Every day I'll be like, was I flat in this song, or how did this sound? I don't know what the f you're talking about. I'll tell you when you're on key. He's always the first one to say, no, sounded good, it's gonna be okay. I go up there and I and start to panic. You know what, though? I can't find the key in that. Don't panic. Because you know what, I'll, honestly, Chad, I'll, you know what I'll tell you? You're, you're, you have no problems with the key. If, if I'm having a hard time singing, you know, I gotta pull back away from the mic. You know, he just sings his harmonies twice as loud for me and, and vice versa. Sometimes when, when his voice is hurting him, I pick up a lot of his lines uh, where he's supposed to sing them by himself. I'll grab those for him and we'll just help each other out. Because it's like going to war. I mean, we want to... No. What, help me. Um, grow? Uh, <laughs> sounds like two syllables. Yeah. No, um, you're on your own here. We didn't have this kind of chemistry. Then I, I, don't, I don't think it would have... It never would have worked. It wouldn't have worked. I hope... I had no clue I was going to be right here. No clue. See, I knew that he was going to be here. <laughs> I hope that things go really well for us in America. But we're not a flash in the pan. You know, I hope for longevity in the business. That's what we're planning. Back in the day when we were trying to get a record deal, um, we were, uh, we just kept writing rock and roll songs. And I just used to say that we weren't the, the kind of band that a lot of people wanted to hear at that point in time. And uh, we just kept doing the same thing we were doing. And then all of a sudden it was like, rock, we want rock. And so then we got a record deal, we sold lots of records. And we were giving an opportunity on a large scale at a point in our career when it was finished. And we made sure that people heard us. There was no way you, you, you couldn't hear us. 